Hello everyone. Would you like to see how we can fiddle our measurements in audio? Of course you would. So I'm just doing some noise testing on my first batch of these Spartan 5s and I'm measuring them through this precision test fixture. I should really make a proper one with a shielded enclosure and a cartridge inside it with some RCA outs but this works quite well for the time being. And I'm measuring the noise on the output with a cartridge connected. And at the moment I'm getting minus 82 decibel volts. And so that's with reference to a volt, but because we've got a 5 millivolt cartridge and a gain of 100 times at 1 kilohertz, we get a signal to noise ratio that's about 6 decibels less than this. So 76 decibels signal to noise ratio with a cartridge connected, which is pretty good. I'm very happy with it. And you can see I've also high passed the measurement at 220 hertz. And the reason for that is just to preclude mains hum, which is probably going to be pretty rampant in my workshop from getting into the output. We get rid of 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 150 hertz, 200 hertz. So we can get a pretty accurate idea of what the actual noise that this is producing is versus the ambient magnetic fields in the room. And so 76 dB is pretty good, but let's say we're into marketing. How could we how could we make this a little bit more attractive? Well, one way to do it is with A weighting. So we go from 82 to 84, which is pretty nice. We get another two decibels for free by doing that. Let's just go back again. And another way we can do it is by not actually measuring it with a cartridge connected. So your turntable cartridge is actually a lot of very fine coils of wire wrapped around a magnetic material. And it has an impedance that rises quite sharply as frequency increases. So current noise that comes from the 47 kilo ohm loading resistor inside your preamplifier, and your preamplifier itself has some input current noise, will flow through that impedance and convert to voltage noise, which will then be amplified and will then measure. So if I disconnect the cartridge altogether, we'll see that suddenly we get minus 70, and that's about four times worse than minus 82. And the reason for that is because the cartridge is no longer passing those noise currents through it, and what's happening is they're just going through the load resistor and being increased by that. There's nothing to really damp them down and shunt them away to ground. So what if instead of having the inputs open, we just short them with these shorting plugs? And so these won't really convert any current noise to voltage noise. And we should get a better figure. Look at that. So now we've got minus 90, 8 decibels, more than twice as good. And so... By measuring like this, we appear to have a better to signal to a better signal to noise ratio, which is a rather naughty trick. So always make sure whenever you're looking at a phono preamplifier specification that they're actually measuring with a cartridge load connected. And this is a rather unforgiving load as well. It's a DJ cartridge, so it has lots and lots of turns of wire. It's quite effective at turning current noise into voltage noise. So it's an excellent candidate to use for this test. So that's about it. And of course, if we a waste that, we get another decibel. Or we could just say minus 89 dBV. Or we could be even cheekier, and we could reference that to the maximum output of this phono preamplifier, which is about 8 volts RMS. So we get 18 decibels versus 1 volt, which is 8 volts RMS. And all of a sudden, we can claim a dynamic range of 100 decibels, which is certainly a more attractive figure than 76. So I hope that helps. I hope it's interesting. And uh, just keep your eyes open and make sure you don't get your trousers pulled down. Take care.